Near as I can make it, it will cost you $2.25 to mail the package. Can you weigh up about a dollar ten cents worth? It is a peculiar sort of letter, I'm after thinking. When what's mailed and what's not has no apparent bearing on the total sense of it all. Tell the truth, it's not really letters. Just a bunch of notes. Notes? Things I've seen, places I've been, thoughts that crawl into my head. Ah, oh, like a diary, you mean? Yeah, I send them along to a newspaper editor back home. Is that a fact now? If ever you feel the urge to do a paragraph on Grizzly Hill, you'll not neglect to mention the postmaster that goes by the name of Liam O'Shea. It's a promise. Thanks. Gaskin, come here and read this. is the worst thing that can happen to a man. I've seen it spread like a plague ep epidemic over an entire army encampment touched off by something as ordinary as a soldier's letter from home. <laughs> I'll have my property. Now hold on a minute, Sonny. Am I going to have to climb over you to get it, mister? Now, don't get your back up, Sonny. We're just having a little fun. Mister, if I thought you had the brains to understand my writing, I'd be flattered. But by the looks of you, there's more desert wasteland between those ears than there is in all of Texas. Dumb, am I? Oh, you mangy little coyote, I can put my ex to a check big enough to buy this whole county with enough left over to box it up and ship it east. That's how dumb I am. I couldn't care less what you do with this county. All I want's my papers back. Of course, if you'd prefer to uh, eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, give him his papers back. Now, come on, Gaskins. I'm not paying you to hang around this store all day. Uh, lad, I want a word with you. It, uh, it appears you might be shopping for employment. Yeah. You can read and write, that much I know. And I'm assuming you can count to ten without losing your way. What's left you can get from the textbooks. Sure, lad. Tis the post of schoolmaster I'm offering you. Schoolmaster? Aye. Me? Aye. For a few weeks only, till our replacement gets here from St. Louis. Are you serious? Aye, that I am. Consider the salary, lad. More than you'd make in three months punching cows. Short hours. Everybody looking up to you with respect. But, um... I've had no experience. 
Think of the children, the little darlings, their precious educations interrupted by the scholastic hiatus. I'm appealing to your social conscience, lad. You mustn't refuse. Doesn't the school board have to put it to a vote first? You're, uh, you're looking at the school board. Well, how about that big noise I just rubbed up against? Cal Ambruster? What about him? Well, I don't think he's gonna like this. You know, lad, the very same thought that occurred to me. Talking to me like that, like as if I was nothing. Just a piece of dirt that he got caught under his boot. Well, I never heard of nobody being talked to death yet, Paul. Doing, like you always said, doing, that's what counts. As if books and brains was the same thing. I never got nothing out of a book except a mail-order pump. Never stepped no foot in a schoolroom, neither. Neither will one of my kin. Self-made. That's me. Hey, look at you, Troy. You ain't even 21. You know more about the land and the cattle on it and work harder than anybody in this county. Well, tomorrow, Paul, I may be a little unmindful of my chores. I hear that O'Shea sent word for the kids to go over to the schoolhouse and help that new teacher tidy up. But you know, I got a hunch that they ain't gonna make it. Now, maybe now you get the idea. It ain't you or you or nobody to come around this schoolhouse, you understand? Now, get home. Get home. Get out of here. Go on, Scott. Beat it. <laughs> Tis a bold, brave warrior you are, Troy Armbruster, and no mistake. Good morning, Peggy. Tis proud you must be of this day's work. Oh, do you think they care? Did you ever see a bunch of kids that wanted to go to school, did you? Well, to certain sure such an ambition never occurred to you. Well, do you let me pass? You know enough. You read and write. Now, what's a girl want to go to school for anyway? Well, you'd be surprised what a girl can learn from the right teacher. You taken up with that outsider? And if I have? Oh, well, I couldn't expect you to understand a man of his caliber. He's, he's sensitive, intelligent, and mannerly. How come you know so much about him? A man's past is in his face. A man? Why, well, he ain't no older than I am, Peggy. But he's lived. Why, well, he's traveled everywhere and seen everything. Ah, that's bums travel. People ain't got nothing to travel around like that. Everything I need's right here. I'm foreman of my dad's spread. And I'm foreman of my dad's spread because I can do the job better than anybody else can. There's room for improvement. Yeah, like what? Like taking your hat off while you're addressing a lady. Hi. Hi. I'm Peggy O'Shea. I was uh, expecting a larger turnout. Oh, they'd be here if they could. But it's himself that's stopping them. Uh, Troy Armbruster. Well, I guess I better have a talk with him. Plan to keep this up? You plan on stopping me? I might give it a try. All right. <clears throat> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you have the first swing. You mean it? Sure I mean it. You go right ahead. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. All right, kids. Enough time's been wasted.
enough for today, kids. Thanks for helping to clean up. See you in the morning. It's a big difference, doesn't it? Lord Byron, my favorite poet. You know, you like him in so many ways. Oh. Lord Byron doesn't have to face a schoolroom of kids in the morning. <laughs> it must be a grand thing to have traveled as you have, to have met adventure in so many forms, not secondhand from books as most of us do. Well, you've traveled. It's a long ways from Dublin to Grizzly Hill. Eight years old I was when my father brought me. The trip meant little to me then. This is all I know. You know, it is a terrible thing to have to settle for so little, when you know you were born for something better. It's getting late. Where will you sleep? In here. Huh. Well, you'll, you'll take dinner with us. Now, you can't say no to roast venison and huckleberry pie. Sure now, would Lord Byron decline such an invitation? <laughs> There's three of us. <coughs> well, um, I do hope you make this a habit. Well, it's possible. Uh, a fella could get real addicted to your pie. Well, um, good night. Good night. Recognize them, lad. Oh, it's just some ornery drunks. It's too dark to see their faces. I can pin a name on one of them. Uh, Peg, you don't know. Tis precisely the sort of low shenanigans he'd be up to. And needing a nose full of whiskey to give him courage. Troy <laughs> Armbruster may be a lot of things, but I don't think he's a coward. Whatever's eating him goes a lot deeper than our scrap. Tis certain sure you don't know the Armbruster character. Thick skinned, uneducated lots, both of them. What any woman can see in either one is beyond me. Nay, hey, tis my own fault. Twas no better roses I ushered you into. If you wish to resign. Resign? You couldn't bust me loose from this job with a scattergun. Now, can anyone tell me where and when Cornwallis surrendered? All right, Peggy. Cornwallis surrendered at Yorktown, Pennsylvania, 1781, October 19th. That's correct. Write this down. Now I'd like to talk to you about a man who was many things. Humanitarian, inventor, president of the United States. He was the author of the Declaration of Independence. His name was Thomas Jefferson.
you're starting school on, Brewster, take a seat in the back. I'll stand. I may not be staying. We were talking about the Declaration of Independence and Thomas Jefferson. It was signed July 4th, 1776. He said I was uneducated, got no ambition to go to school. So here I am. And this is what he said. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Brewster? Yeah. I learned fast. That's not the point. A girl doesn't visit a man late at night unless she's chaperone. It is only a schoolgirl visiting her teacher. Well, how could be more innocent? If you're just a schoolgirl. But I'm a woman, is that it? I was afraid you hadn't noticed. I noticed. Well? Peggy. Wait. I know what's in your mind. She's only a country lass, you're thinking. Like hundreds you've known. Common as flies they are, nothing to give a man save a dog's devotion. Not like some of the sophisticated women you've known. Peggy, sometimes you see things that don't exist. Ah, uh, you cannot downgrade yourself in my eyes, Johnny Yuma. The first time I saw you, it was as if I'd received a picture postcard from some far off place. The Taj Mahal, maybe. Now, you're the outside world, Johnny. The world I belong to. Believe me, there's nothing romantic about the life I lead. I hate this place. I don't belong here, no more than you do. We're special. Can't you see that? Look, I left some poems in your desk today. Stanzas I've composed. Um, maybe you didn't uh, find them? I found them. Well, that's the real Peggy O'Shea. My heart went into those rhymes. Everything I think and feel. Are they the expressions of some provincial drudge? Of some drab housewife? I don't know much about poetry. Oh, it isn't expert criticism I'm asking, but well, simply from the scanning of them, surely you can tell. Oh. I, oh, I see, I... I certainly do see. It's <laughs> a fool I've been. <laughs> That's all I see. I close my eyes and I can't even shut it out. He doesn't want me, Troy. He doesn't want me. Oh, you think I'm proud of what I did, jumping him three to one? You're to... acting me crazy. 
hurting you, not like you've been hurting me. Today I went to school, me, Troy Armbruster. My old man's gonna skin me alive when he finds this out, you know that? But I did it to please you, but nothing pleases you, does it? I'm gonna make you forget him. I'm gonna make you... Lass, where have you been? You had me worried something terrible. I went for a walk, Father. Let me have a look at you. Who was he? Don't ask me, Father. Don't ask me. Speak, Lass. Who was he? I'll have a name from you. Who was he? about we'll show you what it's all about how could you do me this way do do what messing around with our women folks that's what's teacher did she say that well it's not true you expect us to believe she did that to herself i never laid a hand on you peggy and you know it father you wouldn't listen to me you wouldn't let me explain last we know you were here there's no explaining to do. Take that shirt off of him. Shoot him if he moves. Now, wait a minute, Paul. You can't bull with him. You kill him. I can't, huh? Now, wait a minute, Paul. You didn't give Peggy a chance to explain. He only tried. Maybe you think we ought to let him off with a talking to, huh? Now, Paul, you know that's not what I mean at all. Not so fast. Maybe I got something to say about this. Some more of your fancy words, teacher. She didn't tell you all of it. You could be real sorry afterwards. Instead of a whip, you ought to be measuring me for a wedding outfit. If you want, I'll spell it out for you. You don't have to spell it out for me. You take it back or I'll kill you. You dirty her name to save your stinking hide. It was me, you understand? It was me. It was me. Oh. Oh, Peggy, I love you. You pushed him into it, lad. You knew you could get him to admit to it. You knew that much, lad. He needed a nudge. If it was half the man I figured, there wasn't anything else he could do. You won't be here for the ceremony. New school teacher arrives Monday. I left a wedding present with your pa. Oh, now you shouldn't have. You know, what we've learned from you is present enough. I keep learning too. Congratulations, Troy. Oh, thank you. I won't be able to go back to school, but I'll have a teacher at home now, so I'm going to learn to read and write. <laughs> well, so long. Maybe I'll see you around. But I ain't going to learn to read no Lord Byron. Oh. Johnny Yuma was a rebel. He rode through the web. The Johnny Yuma. Fighting mad, this rebel lad, he 
packed no stars, he wandered far where the only law was a hook and a draw the rebel away. Johnny away Uma, the rebel. Johnny Uma was a rebel. He rode through the west. Did Johnny Uma? Searched the land, this restless land. He was panther quick and leather tough. If he figured that he'd been pushed enough, the rebel. Johnny Umar. Johnny Umar. 